Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. I repaired and restored in a previous video and as you can see it's still working perfectly fine. Now the reason I'm making this video today is I want to do a little bit of an experiment. I've always wanted an NTSC NES um, but they can be a little bit expensive to, to get them shipped over here. It would cost me somewhere about £150 to get one. Um, and you don't know what sort of condition it's going to be and if it's going to make it over here okay. Um, but I've had an idea um, what I can actually do. Um, I have three Famicoms. Um, now, the first one I use all the time, it's my main one. The second one, I just keep it just in case the first one breaks down. And the third one... I keep it for spare parts. Now what I'm thinking of doing with the third one is taking the CPU, the PPU and the crystal oscillator out of it and swapping it for the PAL CPU, PPU and crystal oscillator that's in this and then that will convert this into an NTSC system. So yeah, if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now this is my Number three Famicom, this is the one I'm using for spare parts. Um, I've already taken out the actual rubber um, parts in this thing. It's, you know, used uh, on my first Famicom and second Famicom. Um, but this is my third that I'm just using for spare parts. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get inside this thing. I'm not going to film that, guys, because I've already shown you how you get inside a Famicom before. And I'll just going over old ground so yeah I'll get inside this thing I'll get the motherboard out and we'll start taking out the CPU the PPU and the crystal oscillator that's the Famicom's motherboard out what I'm going to do now is fire up my desoldering gun and I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes just removing the CPU the PPU and the crystal oscillator from this so I'll crack on with that and come back that's the NTSC CPU, PPU and Crystal Oscillator removed from the Famicom board and I'm happy to report that the, both the CPU and PPU came out perfectly fine, no lifted pads so uh, I can reverse it uh, if I uh, feel like it. What I want to do now is exactly the same thing to this as I did with the Famicom, strip it down, I want to take out the PPU, the CPU and the Crystal Oscillator and we can swap them um, and then we should have a NTSC NES. And I'm not going to show you me stripping down this guys, I've already shown you that in my two previous videos. So yeah, I'll get this stripped down and then we'll get that CPU, PPU and the Crystal Oscillator off the board. Now I've got the NES motherboard out, now same again, I'm just going to spend 10 minutes with my desoldering gun, I'm going to be sucking out the PAL CPU, the PAL PPU and the PAL Crystal Oscillator uh, and when I've done I'll come back and that's the PAL CPU, PAL PPU and PAL Crystal Oscillator removed from the board as you can see no lifted pads uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some sockets and solder them in to the board uh, I'll do that and then come back that's both sockets for the PPU and CPU installed all there is to do now is install the crystal oscillator into here and install the CPU and PPU into the sockets and then hopefully we've got a complete NTSC system so I'll crack on with that and then come back that's the NTSC crystal oscillator NTSC CPU and NTSC PPU installed let's get this back together and give it a test What I want to do now is, is give it a quick test, so I've only partially put it back together because I don't want to button it all back up and there's something wrong, so um, yeah, I'm just going to partially test it 
So what I'm going to do is power on, see what we get. And we've got a purple screen. Um, that's pretty good, guys. Um, if you remember my previous video when I turned around and said when you disable the lockout chip, you either get a white screen or a purple screen. Well, there's your purple screen. And one other thing you may notice is it's full screen. And if you look carefully, my camera is shimmering. So that's telling me that's at 60 hertz. Um, because I'm filming at 50 and this is 60 and I'm getting that shimmering on my camera. So that's a really good sign. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a game. I'm going to pop it in this thing. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we now have an NTSC NES. So I've got my cartridge of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt in there. Let's power on and see what we get. <laughs> hey, beauty. And I can tell straight away that's NTSC because uh, it's making my camera flicker. So uh, let's start. I'm not going to play the music for too long, guys, because you know, you know what Nintendo's like. They'll, they'll claim the video even if uh, there's a little bit of music in there. So let's start. Now, can you hear how fast the music is? That's because it's a PAL game uh, running on uh, a now NTSC system. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to reset that, guys, so the uh, the music stops. So. I don't get a copyright strike uh, from Nintendo, but yeah, there you go, guys. That's uh, now an NTSC NES. What I've done is I've socketed the Famicom's CPU socket and PPU socket and I'm going to put the PAL CPU, PPU and Crystal Oscillator from the NES into this and see if we get the world's first PAL Famicom <laughs> That's the PAL CPU, PPU and Crystal Oscillator installed into the Famicom board Let's get this back together and see if we've got the world's first PAL Famicom. <laughs> the Famicom's back together with the PAL PPU, CPU and Crystal Oscillator. So let's power on, see what we get. And there's our white screen. And I'm not getting any camera flicker. And if you look, uh, we've got a border. Uh, so that tells me that Yep, that's definitely outputting a PAL signal. So, let's power off. Donkey Kong. Power on. <laughs> and there we go. The world's first <laughs> PAL Famicom. <laughs> Unbelievable. So yeah, there you go guys. It just proves you can actually swap the CPU, the PPU, and that crystal oscillator. And yeah, that is the world's first PAL Famicom. <laughs> and we're all back together. So let's power on our now NTSC NES. 
and there we go we've got Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt I'll just select Super Mario Brothers I'm not going to start it because the music will start but yeah there you go guys uh, you can actually convert a PAL NES into a, a, an NTSC or, or basically a US NES uh, by using a PPU, CPU and Crystal Oscillator from a Famicom. Now um, the reason I've done this guys is because I was always curious to see if it could be done because um, you read online that it can be done but I've never ever seen anyone do it um, and I thought you know what if I can get the CPU and the PPU and the Crystal Oscillator out of both systems and not cause any, any damage and socket the CPU, PPU and uh, Crystal Oscillator um, then you know swapping them around shouldn't be a problem um, but yeah as you can see 100% confirmed it works 100% so yeah there you go guys hope you liked the video if you did Please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Actually works. <laughs> catch you next time, guys.